recently I upgraded to Windows 7 and I realized I forgot all of my configurations for how I had set up most of my GNS3 connections and VirtualBox connections. So this is, this is a small tutorial um, on basically how to set that entire thing up uh, and all the little gotchas that might be in the way. First we're going to look at uh, just connecting a VirtualBox um, machine, virtual machine, to a GNS3 router. Notice here we have router 1 connected to a Windows server, which is a GNS um, 3D box. And when you'll pull it up, you'll notice 17.1, um, 17.2. And you'll notice it's 17.2, and we should be able to ping 17.1 just fine. Now, as for how that's connected, let's go to Network Adapters. And once that pops up, you'll see that we're using a bridged adapter with Microsoft Loopback Adapter number 4. And if we take a look, we're setting the IP manually on the box itself. Um, the 192.168.1.1 for the DNS server is something... Um, for connected to the internet, which I will show you later. Let's take a look at the network connections. Now, we'll notice that this is using Microsoft Loopback Adapter number 4. So we're going to go to Properties there. You'll notice um, that everything is unchecked except for VirtualBox, Bridge, Networking, Driver, and Internet Protocol version 4. I'm not sure if all of those need to be unchecked, but I believe Client for Microsoft Networks has to be unchecked. And if you hit the properties, it says obtain automatically, automatically, so nothing is set on the actual PC itself. And that's the same for our Linux box as well, which is able to ping. Um, this is 2.168.18.1, and that's the router on that connection right here. And that's able to ping it just fine as well using the exact same network adapter setup as the Windows box adapter number three and obviously just set the IP manually as well mm -hmm. all right so we'll notice here that if you take a look here you'll notice that um, both the Windows server here if you the loopback adapter is connected directly to it. Um, loopback external loop. It ha has a name. It does not unfortunately show you which adapter it is. So just name the adapter something you'll remember, and always use that. So um, those are directly linked to those two Ubuntu and Windows Server. And next, you'll also notice that the router is connected to my local machine here, and that is through the network interfaces, which is where it gets a little tricky. If we take a look um, at our network connections, you'll notice that there's a network bridge um, and that the local area connection and the internal loop are bridged. The internal loop is connected to this cloud. If you go into configure, etc., drop down, find internal loop. Right there, it's connected to that. And then I just went in and bridged my local area connection with my internal loop. Now, if we take a look at this network bridge, we will notice, first off, that both of those are checked and nothing else. And that the IP address, I set it manually in this case, a lot of times it'll set it automatically, no big deal. I just went ahead and set it manually, and you'll notice that it's on the 192.168.1 network. Um, slash 24 default gateway is my gateway out to the internet and my preferred DNS server um, is my default gateway which is my DNS server alright and that's the basic setup that you'll need unfortunately you still won't be able to get to the internet quite yet let's take a look at our router configuration which is the next most important part of it if we do a show run we'll 
zoom past, you'll notice I already, this is my interfaces were all set up, just standard interfaces, 1 and 2, 1, 6, 8, 17 dot 1, and 18 dot 1 there, and here's the magic number right here, IP route 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 9, 2, 1, 6, 8, 1, dot 1. That's setting my default gateway on the router to 1, dot 1. Alright, let's take a quick look at what we have so far. Right now, since we added the default gateway on the router, we can go ahead and ping 192.168.1.1 so we can, we're able to ping entirely um, to the router. And now ping google.com, complete success. So, so far we are, we have a good success rate. We are able to ping um, all the way to the internet from our first little router. And so, that means we are able to ping from R1 through our local machine, through the bridge connection, and out to the internet. Next, let's take a look at our server here. And now if we try and ping 192.168.1.1, you'll notice that that fails out. The reason is, um, even though this may be able to ping, say, 192.168.1.112, sorry, 1.200, um, the router interface, um, no other place has a route to 17.2. <coughs> now, Technically, we could add that route on the machine itself, but that still would not give the router any route to um, 192.168.17.2. Unfortunately, the router, the router, which is basically just sitting out here, let's say, only knows about this interface right here on R1. When it gets 17.1, it sends it out to the internet because that's the default gateway. So we actually have to add a route on our router itself.